Visa is diving deeper into crypto to boost the speed of cross-border payment transactions. The payments giant is expanding its stablecoin settlement capabilities with Circle's USDC stablecoin to the Solana blockchain. Joining us now to discuss the Solana Labs co-founder and chief operating officer, Raj Gokal. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hi, thanks for having me. Good morning. Hey, Raj. Thanks for... Thanks for being here. All right. Tell us how this partnership with Visa came about. Yeah. Um, so as uh, as your viewers may know, and as you may know, um, Visa has been one of the more forward thinking uh, payments giants um, and uh, and has a large team focused on crypto. Um, they started evaluating um, their options for expanding and, and scaling their settlement pilot um, a while ago. Um, and I think the striking thing was just the level of technical diligence and, and the speed and, and the um, confidence with which that team, uh, you know, evaluated and understood um, the different trade-offs for, uh, for for scaling solutions in crypto. Um, and you know, we've had a team focused on uh, things like Solana Pay, uh, getting developers off the ground with with easy payment solutions. Um, there's a, a large, uh, thriving ecosystem of payments uh, startups in the Solana ecosystem that. Are utilizing Solana Pay, um, so Solana started to have a reputation for being really good for payments based on its performance. Um, but you know, in in talks with with Visa, and as you may have seen a couple weeks ago, also Shopify uh, supports Solana uh, USDC payments. Um, it's it's becoming clearer that um, Solana's technical capabilities are are really good for these types of applications. Um, so. Yeah, the, uh, the the Visa team w has been extremely um, professional and, and great to work with, and and, and our team is uh, uh, really happy to see them joining the ecosystem. So I have to ask this because it, it, it from somebody who, who's kind of been uh, looking at crypto now for for a decade and this whole idea that okay, uh, this is supposed to replace. Crypto is supposed to replace the likes of Visa. How does Visa actually fit in? I, 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 we, there's a tweet that came out uh, from Visa saying that they've moved already, a, a, you know, some a few hundred million dollars in USDC. What is Visa's role in that transaction, and why would Visa need to be involved in it? Yeah, you know, Visa's uh, an, an authorization network. So when you're, you know, when you're swiping a card at a merchant. Um, you know, uh, Visa provides the experience for the end consumer of, of just convenience and, and near instant payment authorization. But what a lot of people don't see is that the funds used for their purchase need to move between the bank of the issuer and and the merchant's bank, um, the, the acquirer. So, you know, Visa's treasury and settlement systems enable the clearing and settlement and movement of, of billions in transactions a day. And um, and, you know, this is really Visa's uh, uh, bread and butter is having the relationships, having the clients with uh, all of these banks and then having the trusted global brand with consumers. Um, for some, you know, for a network like Solana, I think the dream is that, um, you know, the network can't make its own partnerships um, and the network is general purpose and has many people building with many use cases on top. So uh, it's really, you know, a, a joy and, and kind of part of the, the, the mission to see companies like Visa using these um, rails that are built to be, you know, uh, basically as performant as possible and, and down to the cost of the, uh, the hardware and the network bandwidth required to achieve global consensus and then build um, uh, value add services and products on, on top, um, you know, and, and I think what's interesting about payments and, and somebody like Visa expanding a pilot like this is that it is, um, you know, looking at their core business and, and parts of uh, their value stack for things like cross-border payments and using crypto for one of its, you know, most um, uh, core use cases. I mean, in, in the first uh, paragraph of the Bitcoin white paper, Satoshi posited that Bitcoin could be, um, you know, a, a global peer-to-peer -peer payment system. Um, it, it's, I think, taken this long to see uh, uh, those pipes actually get replaced with, with companies like Visa. I, I, I again this I, and I and forgive me because I, I I'm kind of thick-headed and and that's why I'm not a maker but a, a, a you know on this side of the of the discussion but it, how if I'm if I'm transacting in USDC why would I need a visa if I could just get a QR code and just send it directly uh, if I, if I'm buying from somebody why can't I why can't I just go from the USDC one wallet to another isn't that isn't that kind of the whole point? 
Yeah, of course. Uh, and, and, you know, pointing back to products that use Solana Pay. So if, if you were to give me your phantom address right now, I could send you, um, you know, USDC without an inter intermediary and with no, you know, uh, delay in, in settlement. Um, most of the world is not uh, uh, onboarded to crypto wallets yet, and they aren't actually self custodying their their assets. Um, and what consumers are used to doing is, is using credit cards. This is what most merchants in, in the world are still uh, using. Um, if you look back to the, the Shopify news from a couple weeks ago, there is a capability for, for users to pay directly with USDC scanning a QR code. But what this pilot is about is really the settlement between the banks. Um, that sometimes happens at the end of the day, at the end of the week. If there's holidays, it can take many days. And for merchants, this really matters because merchants, um, you know, uh, just like all humans, uh, value money sooner than, than later. There is time value of money. And so what uh, using crypto rails for um, interbank settlement does is um, so then, you know, it, it, it creates faster rails behind the scenes, not necessarily upfront for consumers. Those few, I, I, and uh, I'll let Jen go next because I know she, she's got this question, but uh, it, it, there were a few hundred million dollars in transactions. What exactly were they for? Were they for anything other than trading? Yeah, so um, part of what Visa announced uh, is that they expanded their settlement pilot to, to three new um, banks. So WorldPay, Nuve, and, and Sapo. Um, what Visa is, you know, uh, what, what I expect Visa to do is offer Solana as an option for, um, you know, that, that interday settlement um, for more banks. Um, and what was announced here is, um, in addition to the Crypto.com pilot that they started on Ethereum, uh, these three, three new banks have been added, settlements have already started happening uh, to the tune of millions of dollars. And those three new banks that they announced are all uh, uh, using Solana for settlement. Um, and the reason they're doing that is uh, for performance and, and speed and cost. You know, I want to say probably last year, a lot of the partnerships, a lot of the news we heard about Solana had to do with entertainment. They had to do with NFTs. Now a lot of the headlines are very focused on stable coins, uh, settling payments. Would you say there's been a shift of focus for Solana um, to focus more on stable coins? I would say, you know, the vision of Solana has always been to be uh, a general purpose, um, you know, execution layer that is as performant as possible. The use cases that, um, you know, tend to trend or see a lot of demand for that performance um, can, can ebb and flow. Um, you know, in the, in the first uh, six months to a year of Solana's life, there were, you know, many dozens of, of DeFi startups, um, and and you know the primitives got built and interconnected. Um, it, last year, I would say that um, you know the the largest user onboarding funnels were from NFTs. That continues to be the case, right? Um, these use cases are still growing. You know, DeFi 2.0 is is happening on Solana. Volumes are uh, high, much higher than they were even a year ago. Um, in NFTs, uh, the largest user bases in consumer crypto are being built. Um, things like Drip House, which is a subscription NFT um, platform, has uh, hundreds of thousands of users in less than a year. Um, and they're doing it with compressed NFTs that bring the economics of this down to the, the cost of something like a MailChimp uh, campaign. Um, so these use cases are still happening. They're growing. There are awesome founders that are getting funding and, and building you know, new high growth startups in those categories. But um, I think what we tend to focus on as an industry is, is what's new and, and what's really pushing the edge. And um, what we are seeing is in payments, I think the maturity of particularly the Solana network after having gone through a couple cycles of, you know, all of this battle testing and, um, you know, huge spurts of, of user and developer growth and, um, and unpredictable activity. Um, the, the battle tested nature of the network now, I think is, is starting to get to a point where large payments networks um, see the technology as ready for prime time. So I think there will be, um, you know, a continued focus on, on stable coins and real world assets um, and Forex. Um, and, you know, in addition to the Shopify and Visa um, announcements, I, I expect to see more payments um, giants that, that build on top of Solana. Um, 
you know, at some point, I'm sure uh, the expansion of, of the payments use case on Solana will will be just as boring as, as NFTs and DeFi are today. And, and there might be some other new use cases that we're really excited about, um, you know, but these things happen concurrently on the same network. And for users, it looks and feels like one clean, uh, you know, network experience. And and that's part of the, the, the joy and, and um, you know, the differentiation for Solana. Can you tell us about any other potential partnerships? Of course, you mentioned Shopify. We now have Visa. Any other ones on, in the pipeline? Um, you know, I can't say anything specific, but I can say that, um, you know, I've been really pleased by the activity during this bear market versus 2017, 2018. Um, we spoke to a lot of large enterprises uh, before launching Solana and, you um, you know, in, in the last bear market, when the markets really cooled down and, uh, you know, crypto sort of fell out of fashion, a, a lot of those teams just got completely disbanded and nobody was really interested in launching anything new until uh, the markets came back. I think this time what we're seeing is, um, you know, again, uh, a lot of these large enterprises are looking at crypto as, you know, not dead or out of fashion, but just in a lull where everything is much more battle tested. So I think what we're seeing is um, these decisions are much more driven by technical teams and that, that flow up to, you know, the CTO or the, the, the CISO. And that's what Solana was designed for. So to answer your question, I think, um, you know, Having a, a company like Visa, um, you know, and a few others that have recently adopted Solana, um, put that sort of stamp of, of approval up. I, I, I think we are seeing a lot of interest from others who are, are looking for, you know, a hard technical choice that was made by somebody who, you know, had had the options. Um, and you know, we're ready to to sort of field all that interest and um, and support different use cases with large enterprises. When uh, when was the deal with Visa finalized? Uh, not announced, but finalized. Um, I'm not sure what that means. I, I, you know, Visa started uh, building and, and evaluating the chain a few months ago, um, and they announced yesterday. Um, I, I think there were a lot of conversations in between, um, but uh, cool. yesterday was a pretty landmark moment because it went public. Because there, there were a series of, of, of rallies in Solana's price. Did, did anybody inside Solana or anybody uh, with, with some knowledge that an announcement would come out, that, do, do you know about any buying that's been going on uh, for the token? Um, I, I mean, I think uh, we don't really pay much attention to price or, or you know, the, the soul markets. Um, the real focus is just on getting people unblocked with actually using the network. Um, I, you know, I, I'm not aware of anything that uh, uh, I, we have. We have pretty strict policies about this stuff in place as well. Right. But did, I, I mean, as far as you're concerned, you, or as far as you know, there was there was no buying, insider buying. I I wouldn't know. I'm not sure. All right, Rajan. And lastly, on the topic of the token, we all know that Solana's native token was mentioned in the SEC lawsuits against Coinbase and Binance. Recently, um, Ripple is arguing that the SEC hasn't made enough of a case to warrant an appeal here. Um, are you and the rest of the folks at Solana watching this case closely, given that the token has been mentioned in the lawsuit? And how are you thinking about the um, progressions that have been made? Yeah, you know, I think at, at Solana Foundation um, and at Solana Labs and and at you know many other organizations within the Solana ecosystem and, and within crypto, everyone's paying attention, right? Um, more regulatory clarity would be better for the industry in the U.S. Um, I think, you know, personally, I've been pretty pleased by um, uh, you know the, the defense of the crypto industry that's playing out in in the courts uh, in, in the U.S. Um, and I think it's honestly happening faster than, than expected, but the industry has been prepared for, you know, a, a period of uncertainty to, um, uh, and, 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 you know, and difficulty while moving past that period of uncertainty. I think this happens with every new frontier technology that there's lack of regulatory clarity. There are, you know, rules that get made, um, either, uh, uh through the courts or, or through the legislative branch. I think we're seeing both, um, uh, happen right now. Um, and overall, I think honestly, it's just it, it doesn't factor in as um, you know as as something worth paying too much attention to because it's just a necessary phase of the industry. And I think from from what we see, especially with the Solana network, um, 
you know, none, none of this lack of clarity seems to be holding back the network's ability to solve problems for consumers and developers and, and actually scale its user base. And really quickly before we go, we do have to go. Um, is Solana Foundation or Solana Labs prepared to respond if you are directly targeted by the SEC? Sure. Yeah, I think, um, you know, uh, we're, we're, we're ready to, to help bring that clarity to the, the market um, if, if it comes to that. Um, but so far, I think uh, there are a lot of really amazing people fighting and, uh, and creating that clarity on behalf of the industry like, like Coinbase. Raj, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Congratulations on the announcement. Thank you. Thanks for having me, guys. Take care. That was Solana Labs co-founder and chief operating officer Raj Gokul.